All right, get, let's get, uh, get our Bibles out and let's open them to the book of James, chapter number 3. <clears throat> James, chapter 3. James chapter 3, uh, at babasahin natin ang verse number 14 hanggang verse number 16. We'll just look at the first parts of this. James chapter 3, verses 14 to 16. <clears throat> uh, and the Bible says, But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom... Itong wisdom na ito, na nagdudulot ng bitter envying and strife in your hearts, this wisdom descendeth not from above, doesn't come from God, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. So can wisdom... Bring bitter envying and strife, confusion, and every evil work? If so, we know that it's not from above. Hmm. And so that's what we'll look at uh, today. Let's pr- pray and ask God to bless them. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for the precious words. We thank you, Lord, for the wisdom that comes from above. And I pray against wisdom that is uh, from beneath, Lord. And so we do pray that... And we would listen to the Holy Spirit of God. We would um, have knowledge of the context that we would have understanding in interpretation and that we would have wisdom in application. And we look for the Holy Spirit of God to bring life to us, Lord, uh, through the words of Christ, that we would receive these words, that we would correct our ways, that we would amend our ways and place ourselves underneath the power of the Word of God. Uh, and that we may use the scriptures rightly in our lives. And it would make a big difference. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. So, kung Tagalogin natin ang Bible, ang sabi ng Bible, ngunit kung kayo'y mayroong mapapait na inggitan at pagiging makasarili sa inyong puso, wag kayong magmalaki at wag kayong magsinungaling laban sa katotohanan hindi ito ang karunungang bumababa mula sa itaas, kundi makalupa, makalaman, makajablo. Sapagkat kung saan mayroong paninibugho at pagiging makasarili, doon ay mayroong kaguluhan at bawat gawang masasama. Now last week, we saw pure wisdom. Ang fruit ng pure and holy and godly Wisdom that comes from God is meekness. Meekness is the fruit of true and godly wisdom. <clears throat> when, we, uh, when we come to the Word of God, we always come to God asking for wisdom. Kasi wala talaga, hindi likas sa sarili natin na meron tayong wisdom galing sa Diyos. Ito pala ay hinihingi. We have to ask God for it. Because we do not have it. Now, the book of wisdom sa Lumang Tipan ay yung book of Proverbs. And uh, so let's look at the book of Proverbs real quick. Because it is the book of wisdom. I don't intend to spend a lot of time in the book of Proverbs. Uh, but someday we'll go through the book of Proverbs as well. But for now, just to take a look at the first few verses of Proverbs. Tingnan natin ang chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Now, just to give you an idea, yung wisdom ng mundo ay hindi katulad ng wisdom na nanggagaling sa Diyos. Do you know na merong mga nagbabasa ng Bible na chinachallenge nila kung si Solomon talaga ba ang nagsulat ng book of Proverbs? Kamangmangan, it's the dumbest thing on earth that And you could tell that that was wisdom coming from beneath to say, to challenge, did Solomon write the book of Proverbs? You know, and, and I, I, can, I can show you exegetical commentaries. Commentaries written by biblical scholars. 
These are scholars na hindi alam kung sino ang nagsulat ng Proverbs. At wala nang mataas na mangmang na katulad ng ganun. That's the height of folly. Kasi sinabi sa verse 1, the Proverbs of Solomon. <laughs> it says it right there, the Proverbs of Solomon. Now, I'm sure there's many Solomons in the world, I'm sure. <clears throat> But is the so- this Solomon is the son of David. Well, that kind of narrows it down. You think? And then it says the king of Israel. Well, I wonder what Solomon was the son of David that actually ruled in Israel. I, I don't think there's a lot of people like that. There's only one that I could think of. Well, that one was the one who wrote this. Hello? You see, but if, you, if I take you to these exegetical commentaries, talagang tina-challenge nila. Did Solomon really write this? Verse number two, to know wisdom and instruction. So binigyan tayo ng book ng Panginoon para matuklasan natin, matutunan natin ang wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding. So meron tayong mga words dito. Knowledge, to know, that's knowledge. Wisdom, Karunungan, kaalaman na gamitin yung knowledge na alam natin. And instruction. Ah, ang Bible pala ay book of instruction. Yes, the book of Proverbs, but the entire Bible is a book of instruction. At dito, nalilin lang na ang maraming mga Christians and churches. Bakit tayo nag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos? Para matuklasan natin ang mga instruction ng Diyos sa buhay. And so, talagang pag nag-aaral ka ng Bible, um, palaging asahan mo na iko-correct ka ng Bible at tuturuan ka ng Bible, gagabayin ka ng Bible. We are not here to look for inspiration. We are here to look for instruction. Now, inspiration comes, joy comes, uh, the Word of God becomes sweet when we submit ourselves to the instruction of the Word of God. Doon lang nagiging matamis ang salita ng Diyos sa pagsunod natin sa instruction ng Panginoon. And to perceive the words of understanding. Pinaperceive siya, tinitingnan siya, pinagmamasdan siya, pinag-iisipan siyang mabuti. We are perceiving the words, words. Hindi thoughts, words. Kaya dapat, Uh, maging mahusay tayo sa words ng Panginoon. Sa so, New Year, I want to teach you the words. Kung paano pag-aralan ng English <coughs> ng King James, kasi iba ang English ng King James. Kung paano um, tingnan ang Hebrew at saka tingnan ang Greek. I want to take us in a different level sa pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. So, but you be faithful, maging faithful lang. Maging faithful, lalo na sa uh, Bible class, sa 10 o'clock Bible class. Kasi, uh, gagamitin ko rin yung 10 o'clock sa pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. At ipapakita ko sa inyo kung paano gamitin yung English, yung Hebrew, at saka yung Greek. Why? Why? Napakahalaga. Why not? Why should we learn these things? Kasi sabi dito, perceive the words. So, mahalaga ba ang words? Yes. And the more you know the words, the less na pwede kang lukohan ng tao. You need to know the words. And it says the words of understanding. So, yung understanding, yung... Um, ano ba yung understanding sa Tagalog? Eh? Um, na-intindi. Na-intindi, naunawaan. Yes. Na maunawaan natin. So, Merong mga words na dapat knowledge, alam natin, understanding, maunawaan natin, and pangatlo, wisdom, na ilagay natin sa buhay natin. Okay? So, every time you read the Bible, you look for these three things. You look for knowledge, what am I reading? You look for understanding, what does it mean? And you look for wisdom, how do I apply that to my life? And so, uh, pag nakuha mo yon, 
makukuha mo yung yung wisdom na nanggagaling sa Diyos. So, so let's look at, balik tayo sa book of James. And that is page 1045 sa sample Bible. 1045. Uh, at nasa 1046 na rin tayo. Titingnan natin itong tatlong verses. 14, 15, and 16. And so, uh, today, I want you to see na meron palang wisdom na nanggagaling sa ilalim. <laughs> Hindi sa taas, kundi sa ilalim. And uh, what are the fruits of this ungodly, unpure, unrighteous wisdom? And so, first of all, wisdom that is not from above. Wisdom that is not from above. And the fruits of it. So, unang-una sa lahat, pag ang prutas na lumalabas sa buhay mo ay bitter envying. Bitter envying. Now, sa Bible, bitter envying, ibig sabihin, yung mapait na pagkaingit. Yung mapait na pag-ingit, na nakakaingit. Uh, bitterness produces more bitterness. Ang mapait na espiritu, mapait na puso, ay nagpo-produce ng mas marami pang kapaitan sa buhay. Bitterness produces more bitterness and it tends to embitter more. It tends to become more bitter. The idea of bitter envying is strong resentment. Strong resentment. Ang resentment sa Tagalog, sama ng loob. So yung mapait na espiritu, yung mapait na puso, namumunga ng mapait na, na prutas, namumunga ng masaganang sama ng loob. And it produces more. And it produces jealousy, kaingitan, pagsiselos, against someone. <clears throat> so sama ng loob, pagsiselos, it produces harshness in relationship. Yung malupit yung pananalita mo sa kapwa o sa kasambahay malupit um, mga sinasabi natin malupit we say harsh words we treat each other harshly and we think we're doing okay we think we're you know I'm gonna really straighten you out and I'm gonna use harsh words these are fruits of wisdom that is not from God this is Wisdom from beneath. Meron pa, hindi lang bitter envying, merong strife. Ano yung strife sa Tagalog? Alitan. Alitan. Division. Strife. Pwede ba mangyari sa isang church na magkaroon tayo ng strife sa church? Can we have alitan sa church? Is that possible? Yes. Tingnan mo ang prime example ng New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, page 982, 982, First Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 3. There's an example, a, a primary, unfortunately, a primary example of strife in a local church. 1 Corinthians, which by the way, the only church in the Bible is a local church, just so everybody knows that. And there's no such thing as an invisible, universal, mystical, Protestant, Catholic, mystical body of Christ. Um, there's no such thing as a mystical school. There's no mystical bank. There's no mystical land transportation office. Pero pagdating sa church, merong mystical church. That is the dumbest thing on earth. There is no mystical church. There's only a local, organized assembly of baptized disciples. And so, but when it comes to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3, sabi dito, For ye, second person plural, kayo, ibig sabihin, corporate, kayo. This is speaking to the church at Corinth. For ye, Corinthian Baptist Church, for ye are yet carnal. You're still behaving as though you're not saved. You are yet carnal. Yung, yung ginagawa ninyo, ay parang hindi kayo saved. Nako, napakatinding rebuke galing kay Paul sa Church of Corinth na tinanim niya. This is from their church planter. This is from their missionary. 
And he calls them carnal. Naku, ang bigat ng missionary na itong si Paul. Tinawag niya silang carnal as though they are not saved. Now they are saved. They just act like they're not saved. They act carnal. For whereas there is among you envying. Oh, we looked at that already. Pagseselos, pagkainggit, and strife. There's yun yung alita and strife. And divisions. Are ye not carnal and walk as men? Anong diferensya ninyo sa mga hindi saved? Sila rin. May alitan, may inggitan, may pag-aaway, may division. Ah? So, <clears throat> uh, it should not be in the house of God. Now, let me ask you a question. If it's possible to have division in the church, is it possible to have division at home? In the house? Yes. Is it pleasing to God if there's division in the church? No. Is it pleasing to God if there's division in the home? Husband, wife fighting. Father fighting child. Mother fighting child. Child fighting mother. Child fighting each other. Division, strife, envying. Envying. Oh, I wish I had that. I wish I will never be happy until I have this. That's envying. That's strife. And it's not pleasing to God. Uh, let's go to the book of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, page 572. Page 572. Kaya pansinin ninyo yung, gawa, yung isip ninyo. Kung ang bunga ng ginagawa ninyo ay envying and strife and division, hindi siya makajos. Hindi yan galing sa Diyos. Yung kaalaman na yan galing sa ilalim. Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, what does God's book of wisdom say about it? Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 30, page 572 sa sample, 572. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 30. Proverbs 3.30, Strive not with a man without a cause, if ye have done no har- thee no harm. Pabayaan nyo yung tao kung hindi ka naman niya hinahamak pabayaan nyo siya. Huwag kang makisa, makisabak sa tao. Manahimik ka na lang. Lalo na kung hindi ka naman ginagambala ng tao. Now, is that wisdom? That, that's wisdom from above. You, you know what? You, you can make your life a whole lot easier when you don't stick your nose in somebody else's business. Amen. Lalo na sa Facebook generation. Alam mo yung Facebook generation? Palagi kang tumitingin sa bakod ng iba. What are they doing? Look at that. Shut your mouth, button your lip, and stay out of everybody else's business. Amen. That's some good advice. That's the Hardecker-inspired version. HIV. <laughs> Napo. <laughs> That's parang hindi tama, no? Parang may mali doon, no? HIV. <clears throat> but but the, the the wisdom of scripture go over to Proverbs chapter 17. But I'm telling you, life would be a whole lot easier when you don't stick your nose in somebody else's business. Chapter 17, uh, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 19. Proverbs 17, verse 19. Uh, he that loveth transgression, uh, he loveth transgression that loveth strife. Oh, and he that exalteth his gate seeketh destruction. Yung ma- mga gustong magkasala, ang paborito nila sa buhay ay magkaroon ng alitan. So, likas na sa sarili nila yung pagmamahal ng mali, kaya gumagawa ng mali. And so, <clears throat> there's some wisdom there. Uh, <clears throat> the, some people are just used to fighting. Screaming, yelling, and fighting is a habit that you can develop. But you need to kill that habit. Turn off wrath. Turn away from wrath. And confess it before the Lord and Do not return to it. La, Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18. Page 584. Proverbs chapter 18. Verse 6. 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 Proverbs chapter
Proverbs 18, verse 6. A fool's lips shall enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. So a fool's lips enter into contention. Yung bibig ng mangmang ay palaging pumapasok sa pakikibaka, pakikilaban, pakikialitan, pag-away. So, <clears throat> masanay kayo na gamitin yung wisdom ng salita ng Diyos. Pag ang tao, ang ugali niya, palagi nakikipag-away, nagmumura, bastos, pangit yung lumalabas sa bunganga, nakasanayan niya yun. That is something he got to become, it became habitual. And the Bible calls it the fool's lips. Kaya halimbawa, pag meron kayong ginagawa, tapos bigla na lang may nagsabi sa inyo ng mga pangit na words, ng mga salita na pangit, isipin na lang ninyo, oh, this is a fool's lips. Uh, wag na ninyo nang, wag ninyo nang, uh, ano yun? Uh, to, ano yun? Patulan. <laughs> wag niyo nang patulan yung ganon. Why? Because sanay na siya sa contention at gusto lang niya mag-contend. So, <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 3. Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 3. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife. Ha? Marangal sa isang tao ang tigilan, ang alitan. So, extinguish the strife in your heart and you will no longer look for strife. Uh, Proverbs chapter 25 verse number 8. Proverbs chapter 25 verse number 8. Page 591. Proverbs 25 verse number 8. Go not forth hastily to strive. Huwag kayong magmadali para sa alitan. Lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof when thy neighbor hath put thee to shame. Naku, nakakahiya. Eh, yung lalabas ka sa bahay, makikipag-away ka, tapos map, ikaw lang pala ang mapapahiya. That's embarrassing. That is a shame. And so the wisdom of God is saying, go not forth hastily. Don't be too hasty in your actions. Otherwise, you might be put to shame. <clears throat> so, uh, Proverbs 26, 21. Proverbs 26 and 21. As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, listen to this, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. Ah, kung walang mga, ah, ano ba yung tawag dun sa kahoy? Kung walang mga kahoy na, ano yung dry? Ano? Yung mga uling. Uling. uling, kung wala, yan. Yung mga, kung walang panggatong o uling, hindi pwedeng sindihan at magkaroon ng apoy. So, in essence, ang sabi ng Bible, i-check na ninyo yung spirit ninyo na huwag kayong magkaroon ng mga ganong klaseng spirit para pagdating ng, pagdating ng pangit, na re- pangit na pangyayari, walang pangit na reaksyon ang mangy- manggagaling sa'yo dahil ininingatan mo yung puso mo. You see that? So, <clears throat> this, this deserves to be studied and reviewed and to be reminded. But this is the wisdom from God. So, bitter envying and strife comes from bad wisdom or earthly wisdom, wisdom from beneath. Isa pa, sa uh, James chapter 3, namumunga rin ito ng confusion. You see that in verse number 16. Verse 16, chapter 3, verse 16. Where for, where, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion. So, confusion. <clears throat> Ang ibig sabihin ng confusion, yung, um, uh, ano ba yung itong confusion? Um, kalitohan. And there's also, uh, uh, kasama na rin dyan yung tumult, yung pag malakas ang ingay, nalilito ka, hindi, hindi mo naririnig yung dapat mong gawin, hindi mo naiisip yung dapat mong gawin, dahil yung ingay, napakalakas. That's the result of confusion. Yun ang confusion na pinag-uusapan dito. So, uh, 
First Corinthians chapter 14. Tingnan mo ang First Corinthians chapter 14. Saan nagagaling ang confusion? Sa Diyos ba? Well, sabi ng First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13, page 990 sa sample Bible 990. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. Notice what the scripture says here. For God is not the author of confusion. Same word. Tumult. Noise. Confusion. God is not the author of confusion. So if God is not the author of confusion, who is the author of confusion? Naturally, it is the devil. All right, so uh, avoid bitter envying, avoid strife, avo- avoid confusion, and one more, avoid every evil work. This all comes from bad wisdom. Hmm. Every evil work. Uh, maaari kang gumawa ng evil work sa church, maaari kang gumawa ng evil work sa bahay, maaari kang gumawa ng evil work sa lipunan, maaari kang gumawa ng evil work sa eskwela. Maaari kang gumawa ng evil work sa opisina. Kahit saan ka pumunta, maaari kang gumawa ng evil work kung hindi mo pinupuno yung sar- sarili mo ng wisdom galing sa Diyos. Now, <clears throat> palaging gusto kang impluensyahan ng wisdom. Ang question, wisdom ba ng Diyos o wisdom ba ng mundo ang pinapayagan mong ipasok sa puso mo? You have to decide that. <clears throat> so, Balik tayo sa James. Now, pag nagbabasa tayo ng Bible, palaging hinahanap natin yung verb <laughs> or yung in, uh, 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 imperative or yung command. Okay? So, every time you read the Bible, you always look for the command because the command tells you what to do. I mean, it's not like you're going to read the Bible for nothing. You want to read the Bible for instruction. So, What is the imperative? Ano ang command sa binasa natin? Magmula 14 hanggang 16. Tingnan natin. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not. O, nasa negative. Wag daw mag... Maging ano itong uh, glory not? Um, ano itong, anong ibig sabihin ng glory not? Wag... Glory. Glory. Huwag magmaluwalhati. Ah, huwag mong itaas yung sarili mo dahil meron kang wisdom. Dahil meron kang alam. Don't glory na yung alam mo, worldly wisdom pala. Na namumunga ng strife, a bitter envying, confusion, and every evil work. Alam mo, pag meron kang alam, ang temptation ng may alam magmataas. And that is not godly wisdom. Hindi tayo, hindi ako nagtuturo ng salita ng Diyos dahil meron akong alam at kayo ang makikinig sa alam ko. No, that is worldly wisdom. Ang godly wisdom is wala akong alam. Pumunta ako sa salita ng Diyos. Pinag-aralan ko ang salita ng Diyos nakita ko ang liwanag ng salita ng Diyos, nagpasahapop ako sa salita ng Diyos, at ngayon, dadalhin ko yung alam ko na salita ng Diyos at ituturo ko sa inyo para makita rin ninyo ang liwanag ng salita ng Diyos at magpasakop tayo sa liwanag ng salita ng Diyos. Wala nagmamataas sa atin. Never sa iglesia o sa simbahan na magkakaroon tayo ng priestcraft or pastorcraft. Nobody has arrived. What we learn in the scriptures, what we study in the scriptures and learn, we teach to you in the spirit of humility, praying and asking God to give you grace to understand the same truth that I see that is necessary. And I pray you receive it just like I receive the truth. Did you know that before I teach this to you, I have to study it for me? And if it doesn't speak to me and change me, it will not transform and change you? <clears throat> and 
And furthermore, that means nobody should glory. There is nothing to glorify yourself about. And if anything else, dapat matandaan natin, lahat tayo ay estudante ng salita ng Diyos. We are learning, we are here to learn the Word of God. There is no graduation day for the curriculum of the Holy Bible. Wala. Now in June next year, makukuha ko na yung MDiv. Tapos pag na, nag seven courses na lang, makukuha ko yung D Doctrine of Ministry, ay doctrine, doctorate. Pagkatapos ng Doctorate of Theology, wala na. Nakuha ko na yung pinakamataas sa academic. Pero alam mo, excited pa rin ako. Kasi, pag nakuha ko na yung pinakamataas, babalikan ko ulit yung umpisa. Para makapag-aral ng salita ng Diyos. And that is something that I personally desire. Why? Because I'll never graduate from being a student of the Word of God. And neither should you. Neither should you. Dapat, every Sunday, you come with the idea of, Lord, teach me from your word. Teach me. Instruct me. Correct me. Reprove me. Edify me in the word of God. Tapos, hindi lang Sunday. Dapat Monday, tomorrow. Ano yung plano ninyo? Paano magbasa ng Bible? Tingnan nyo, ha? Every Sunday, meron tayong study notes. Pwede kang kumuha ng isang point dyan for Monday. Another point for Tuesday. Another verse for Thursday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. At isa lang yan. Napakarami nating notes. Baka next year, dapat hole punch ko na lang ito. Para may notebook. Tapos pagtapos na yung isang taon, nakuha mo yung notes bigyan ko kayo ng prize. Nako. 2023, volume 1. <laughs> Pag may kulang, wala na. You fail. <laughs> no, biro lang. I'm just joking. But, <clears throat> learning the Bible humbles us. Wala tayong ipagmamataas. Wala tayong alam. Hindi ka sa sarili natin. Nako. Did you know that you did you know that learning what you know did you know that what you know is 99% borrowed <laughs> 90% borrowed pala <laughs> So we we are not a smart on our own we don't have wisdom in our own uh, we need God to give us his wisdom at ang maganda diyan pag humingi ka ng wisdom sa Diyos, ibibigay talaga sa'yo ng Diyos. Wala siyang ipagkakait sa'yo. Alright, glory not in your carnal wisdom. And ito yung pangalawang command. And lie not against the truth. Huwag ka magsinungaling. So, merong talagang tao, they profess to be wise, but they are fools. Ganon talaga ang tao. <clears throat> Let us not be that way. Okay? <clears throat> so, That's the two commands. They're placed in the negative. Glory not and lie not against the truth. And so, sa mga churches ngayon, pinagsisikapan nila na wag maging negative. You know, Brother RJ, yung mga evangelical churches, talagang tinuturuan nila yung mga preacher boys nila, wag mag- maging negative. Ngayon, yung command nasa negative, yung dalawang command. Ano kayang paikutan nila yan para hindi yan lumitaw ng negative? I don't know how they do it. But they're not going to honor the Word of God because the Word of God is in the negative here. See? So, it's definitely dumb. That's for sure. All right, number three. Last. Tatlong descriptions ng wisdom na hindi galing sa taas. And so, James gives us three descriptions, three sources of the wisdom that is not from above. Well, it's not from above. Where does it come from? One of the places it comes from in verse number 15, it says, This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly. Earthly. Okay? So, ang focus ng wisdom na ito ay hindi galing sa Diyos, kundi galing sa mundo. 
at ito ay hindi maka-Diyos. This is earthly wisdom. So, sa tatlong kaaway ng Kristiyano, ano yung mga kaaway ng Kristiyano? Satan, flesh, and the world. Ha? Kamunduhan. Yung wisdom pala na nanggagaling sa mundo, kalaban ng Kristiyano. It is, it is our enemy to be earthly. Yung kaalaman na limitado lang sa mundong ito. So, dito ako, na, dito ako nangihinayang talaga sa mga rame. Kasi ang pananaw nila, ang perspective nila sa mundo lang. They never stop and think about the perspective of God. Or there's perspective of the Word of God. Kaya maganda ang Word of God kasi yung pananaw natin kinokorek at inaangat mas higit pa sa mundong ito. We see God and the things of God. We don't derive wisdom from the world. We exceed that with the Word of God. Pangalawa, sensual. Ano yung sensual? Flesh. Flesh. You could say natural. You could say carnal. You could say feeling-oriented. Yeah? That's sensual. It makes me feel good. That's why I like the wisdom of the world because it makes me feel good. I will only do what makes me feel good. You know why people cuss and shout and yell and scream? It makes them feel good. That is sensual wisdom. Sensual wisdom. Matuto tayo na wag kumilos sa feelings. Lalo na mga kabataan, gawin ninyo ang dapat gawin, yung tama. Huwag niyong gawin yung gusto niyong gawin. Ayaw kong gawin ito. Ayaw kong gawin yan. Gusto ko lang gawin yung gusto kong gawin. That is childish. Yan para kay Jacobin. Pwede pa si Jacobin doon kasi bata. Pero habang tumatanda yung bata, natututunan niya na gumawa ng mga bagay na ayaw niyang gawin. Kasi ang buhay... Life is not about doing what you want to do. Life is about doing what God wants you to do. <clears throat> so, pag dumating ang masamang balita, ang responde mo, pansinin mo yung responde mo. Kung ang responde mo ay sigaw, alitan, kainggitan, kaguluhan, di parang mali ang reaksyon mo. You're not operating on wisdom from above. You are operating on reaction of the flesh. That's sensual. Pangatlo, devilish. Oh, meron pa lang wisdom ang world, ang flesh, at saka ang devil. So yung dila pala natin, na pinag-aralan natin sa chapter 3 ng umpisa, na impluensyahan ng world, ng flesh, ng devil, ganun din pala ang wisdom natin. Pwede pala tayong mahawa ng world, ng flesh, at saka ng devil? Absolutely. Ano yung wisdom ng devil? Mapagmataas. Wala ka ng iba pang proud na makikita sa Bible kasing proud ni devil. Kaya yung pride napakasama. Pride is bad. There's not a more proud person in the Bible than the devil himself. Lucifer, the anointed cherub. He was not happy being a cherub. He wanted to be God. So ano nung ginawa ng Diyos? Hinambol siya ng Diyos. And so, uh, envious. Wala nang iba pang maingit na nagsiselos maliban lang sa demonyo. He is jealous of the glory of God. He wants to be worshipped as God. Slanderer. Meron bang iba pang slanderer katulad ni devil? Wala na. Siya ang pinakasinungaling sa lahat. He is the father of it. The father of lies. Disorder, anarchy, disturbance, trouble, instability, commotion. These are words that describe the devil and the fruit of his wisdom. Kaya, ingatan ninyo na huwag ma-influensya ng kamunduhan, ng inyong laman, ng sarili, at ng demonyo. I-train ninyo yung iutak ninyo, yung wisdom ninyo na manggaling sa taas. Train your mind to receive the wisdom that comes from above, not from beneath. 
When pure wisdom is not present, there is carnal living. So kung nabubuhay ka sa carnality, yung wisdom na nakukuha mo, galing yan sa earth, sa sensual, or sa devil. <clears throat> the fruit of your behavior or lifestyle demonstrates the kind of wisdom that you possess. Ulitin ko. Yung fruit ng iyong behavior ay ebidensya kung anong klaseng wisdom meron ka. Kung yung fruit ng buhay mo ay mapakumbaba at tumatanggap palagi sa salita ng Diyos, you have meekness of wisdom. Pero kung mapagmataas ka, rinareject mo yung salita ng Diyos, yan ang katunayan na yung wisdom na alam mo, bulok at galing sa earth, sa flesh, or sa devil. If you don't ask God for His wisdom, the world, the flesh, and the devil is always ready to bring you their wisdom. So kung hindi ka humingi ng wisdom sa Diyos, handa ang demonyo at ang mundong ito at ang iyong laman na kumuha ng wisdom galing sa ilalim. Remember that. <clears throat> and so every day, ask God for His wisdom. At kaya everyday dapat nasa salita tayo ng Diyos. Hindi sapat yung linggo lang ang exposure mo sa salita ng Diyos. You need more. And nawatulungan tayo ng Diyos. So, yung iba, naugalian nila bumasa ng Proverbs a day. You know, some people read a Proverbs a day and it's perfectly fine. Because usually in one month, there is 30 days, 31 days. Is that right? Usually 31 or 30. Oh, Proverbs has 31 chapters. At Book of Wisdom pa naman ang Proverbs. So kung gusto mo, every day, halimbawa, today is December 11, babasahin ko Proverbs chapter 11. Bukas, December 12, babasahin ko Proverbs chapter 12. Tapos, kukunin ko yung mga principles ng salita ng Diyos na pwede kong kunin at i-apply ko sa buhay ko. Oh, may prescription na kayo kay Dr. Bill. Ha? Proverbs, kada araw, magbasa kayo ng Proverbs, kada araw, at isa buhay. Yan ang prescription. Okay? Yung may, may sakit, ha? Lahat tayo may merong konti. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the wonderful words of life. We thank you, God, that we don't have to be confused. We don't have to live in strife. We don't have to envy. And we don't have to be bitter. And we don't have to have every evil work. We don't need to accomplish any of that. We thank you, Lord, that we're not locked in to the evil uh, of uh, <clears throat> this uh, earthliness, the evil of sensuality, And certainly we're not under the trap of the devil because of Jesus Christ. So Father, I pray you give us your wisdom. Help the wisdom from above to take over our, our hearts, our, our heads. Help us to live in light of the word of God and apply that to our lives. Lord, strengthen us in your word, I pray, that we may not be confused and sensual, we may not be devilish and may not be earthly and carnal, be bitter and envying and strife and divisions, Lord. Help us to be united. Help us to love you. Unite our hearts to Jesus Christ and help him to be our captain. Help us to follow in submission to him instead of our flesh and the devil in this world. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.